Alrighty. Howdy neighbors and welcome back to the Divine Speaker. Last time we got a bad ending and we are well on our way to another one. Let's go! Where... Where am I? I was in my uh -huh. room. I tried to raise my arms but they were stuck in place. But I was I pulled. Something was keeping my arms strapped Help down. someone! Leos! Fun! Sign! Please! I was tried out through the dark room. They won't come for you. Yep. <laughs> Who's there? I was whispered in my ear. I tried to look, but no one was there. You have an interesting gift, don't you? The gift of stupidity? Thank you. What? And you smell <sighs> incredibly delicious. Ew. Oh my god, that was foul. <laughs> And the what ran down the base of my neck up to my e uh, Stay away from me! Stay away from you? Let's see how long that resolve lasts, shall we? Let me go! Helen's fell in the air once again. I stood closely for the voice, but heard nothing. She looked at my restraints, but they wouldn't budge. I tried to get the chair over, but it was screwed down. This is fine, right? This is supposed to be a dream. It's a dream. If I shut my eyes, then I'll wake up in my bed. It was a fest, but I eventually drifted off. Wrong. Escape. Friends. Trapped. Wake up. How long has it been now? Weeks? Months? Years? I don't know anymore. Does time even truly exist in here? Will I be stuck here forever? Close my eyes, but it was no different than having them open. How long has it been since I last saw light? Every slight movement burned my wrists and ankles. Not once have my restraints been loosened or removed. My lips were dry and cracked. I tried to lick them, but it didn't make a difference. On Laos, sign. Have you given up yet? Uh, who's there? For the first time in forever, that voice called out to me again. Before I was terrified, now it sounded like heaven. I said, have you given up yet? Will I be free if I agree? I... I have. Will you help me? Yes. Touch my hand. <coughs> Felt around with my hand, still unable to move my wrist. Don't want to hit something. <coughs> A pain shot up through my fingertips up my arm and settled in my chest. And I touched, held on tightly and won't let me escape. A rusty smell filled the air and warmth spread over my chest. I let go, but the pain continued. Very interesting. I think you'll be quite useful. Sound of footsteps again and stone fade into the distance. Wait! I did what you wanted! Please! Let me go! I wanted to cry, but the tears wouldn't come. Von Leos sign, why? Why didn't you come for me? Alright, there we go, bad end number two. Lock the door. It's not worth risking it. I should lock the door and go to sleep tonight. I don't even want to know who that was. Click. The lock slides into place, and I made my way over to the bed. The night was cold, and with the blankets made me feel at ease. Best just forget about all of that and get a good night's rest. I spread out over the bed. It was huge. At home, we all had all we had was bunk beds. I was just drifting off to sleep when I heard a sound. I got out of bed quickly and put my ear to the door. It has some kind of light tapping sound. What happened earlier? I feel like I shouldn't check. A small peak wouldn't hurt, right? He opened the door and peeked me out. Tapping sound was louder out there. It was coming from down the hallway, a rhythmic tapping. No matter how hard I tried to squint, it was too dark to see that far. One way to find out would be to walk closer. I'm not sure about this. On one hand, I should just lock my door and leave it at that. Whatever it is, let's concern me. On the other hand, I'm curious. There's really no point in pretending to weigh the options. I'm too curious not to check. Let's 
slipped out of the room and took a few steps down the hall. Having stopped, but I continued on anyway. Hello? I was echoed through the hall, before disappearing. Silence, an empty, hollow silence. A sudden cold shiver ran down my spine, as someone watching me. I stood completely still, I searched around with my eyes, I still could see anyone. Okay, I think I should just go to sleep. I don't want to stay out here. Boo! Fucking ah! sign. <laughs> uh, sign? That's not funny. Sorry, sorry. Did I scare you? I couldn't help myself. You look terrified. I just wanted to surprise you a little. <sighs> what are you even doing out here? I could ask you the same question. What? I heard a weird tapping, so I came to see what it was. Oh, whoops. That was me. I can see that. So, now will you tell me? How could I sleep after all the mysterious things that Knox guy said? All oh, the mysterious things! We died like four times! I just wanted to investigate a little. I feel like a real detective. Aren't you scared? If I say I'm scared, will you hold me? No. Uh, hold you? Isn't that something like you're supposed to do with someone you love? Love? Who told you that? Uh, Fawn told me. He said that out here, people fall in love and kiss and stuff. Just like that, buddy. You're doing great. That's a weird way to describe it. You make it sound like you don't know what love is. I don't. It's new to me. You're pretty young, right? I'm sure you'll understand eventually. Aren't you younger than me? I'm 22. You're four years older than me? Don't worry, I can teach you all the things you don't know. I don't want you to. What? Anyway, that's not really the point. I only recently learned about it. We shouldn't be out here. Hmm. This sounds pretty interesting. Why don't you come back to my room so we can talk more? I'm starting to feel scared after all. Um, well, okay. Being out here is kind of creepy anyway. Right, right. I wouldn't want you to trip either. So we should probably hold hands for safety, yeah? Uh... No. I don't think I'll trip. Uh, what? I won't trip. I managed to walk here fine on my own. Boo! Spoil sport! Tomatoes! What? Come on then, follow me. I fell with Sign back to his room. I him sulking the whole way. The door shut behind us with soft thud, and Sonic quickly locked the door. Better safe than sorry, right? Yeah. Sonic's room was nearly identical to mine. Same bed, same table, same wardrobe, same amount of dust. They definitely haven't... They definitely haven't had many guests lately. What's the point of such a big house if you're just gonna sit empty? He sat down on the edge of the bed and beckoned me closer. So I pulled a chair up and sat down facing him. We haven't really had much time <clears throat> alone, huh? I did that on purpose. Well, we only just met. True. It just feels like we've known each other for much longer. No, it does not. Let's use this time to get to know each other. I want to be close with you, too. I'm so jealous of Fawn and Leos. They get to cling to you all they want. I mean, we're kind of the baby here, but yeah. Yeah. I want to be friends, too. I really don't, but go on. Oh. Yeah. Friends. Hey, I have an idea. We could be really special friends. How does that sound? Uh, yeah. There's a good boy. But first, let's continue that discussion from earlier. What do you mean you don't know what love is? I don't really know what to say. In Aureli Cavella, it just doesn't exist. I only just started learning about it from Fawn. No love? None at all? No. We just get matched up by the speaker. No love involved. Not that I fully understand love yet, though. Hmm... Then what about sex? You can just fuck whoever you'd like, no strings attached? That sounds amazing! There's so many things wrong with what you just said. I... Uh, what? Wait, are you kidding? You don't even know about sex? I... Uh, I don't know anything about it. I've only heard a little. But they have kids in Aurelia Cavella, right? Yeah. But you don't know where they come from. That's right. 
Wow, you've actually lived in a bubble your entire life. I'm almost impressed. Uh, actually, there wasn't a bubble. We were surrounded by... Okay, okay, I get it. So what did Fawn tell you? He told me that you get a warm feeling in your chest, and that's how you know you're in love. Then you get married and kiss and stuff. I met another weird guy who explained a little more to me, too. That's all? You have a lot to learn, then. If you want, I'm happy to teach you. I, I really don't. I'm so good. Teach me? Yeah, you know, for, uh, educational purposes. Fawn only told you about one side of love anyway, the boring side. I can teach you about the other side, if you'd like. That's kind of him. <laughs> that can kill me. Well, if you're offering, please teach me. Seriously? Yay! I hate it. I was sure you'd say no. I look pretty excited. I my heart beat a little faster, too. There's so much I don't know. Sign is a really nice guy. So, um, where do we start? Don't worry. We can deflower you one petal at a time. <clears throat> huh? He stood up in front of me, strained his back, and put his hands behind me like a t-shirt. Why don't we start with a little theory, then move on to something more practical? I want to turn the game off. <laughs> We'll have to take it slow for a pure boy like you. Uh... Okay? Let's start with something simple. Your blue-haired princess was right about love. Mostly. Fluffy feelings, love, marriage, all that soft stuff. Blech. Boring. You know what comes after that? The good stuff. I guess this is almost a lesson on the birds and the bees, huh? The birds and the bees? You can do all that gushy, fluffy crap, have some boring sex, pop out a few children, and ruin your life, or... You can skip all the boring stuff. You don't have to be in love to fuck someone. And I promise you, we don't need to have any kids. Wait, wait. Does that mean you were walking around a sex shop with no clue what was going on? I still have no clue. He paced back and forth, deep in thought. He stopped before turning to face I me. I mean, you still have a dick, Oh my right? god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? I hope you don't mind me taking a seat. I will stop everything here and now. <laughs> so, like I was saying, you do have a dick, right? Why is he... In our grill. I like his earrings, though. He ran his fingertips through my hair. We're slowly dragging them down my body, lower and it lower. It sure feels like you have one. I hate you. He rushed to kiss my pants with his long, slender fingers. Uh, of course I do. So then, surely you've put it to use once or twice? T to use? Are you being shy with me? That's not allowed. You have to answer all the questions your teacher gives you. I want you to leave me alone. Just because you have no concept of love doesn't mean you have no natural instincts, right? So, go on. Tell me. I want to know all... Uh, no! No, no, no. Also, I hope everyone knows that... I don't know where it is. Where is it? Yeah, the stream mode is on. Which means that it's not going to be NSFW. Except for the dialogue. I guess... No. Uh, uh, of course I have. But I... I couldn't help it. I'm just of gonna... Of course you couldn't. You don't skip have to over feel this. bad. That's what it's there for. That's what sex is. Like the feeling you gave yourself. But a hundred times better. A thousand times better. If you do it with me. Sounds interesting. So... How about that practical lesson? I'm not even gonna save. No. I... I think that's enough for tonight. Is it a little too overwhelming? We can always resume our fun another time. The harder the chase. The more fun catching you will be, anyway. What? 
<laughs> nothing, nothing. He really hopped off my lap and pulled me up from my seat. Seeing him this close up, he really is kind of beautiful. Smooth skin, big green eyes. Well, off you go then. We don't want your lover or bodyguard to get jealous, would we? Uh, who? Nighty night. He pushed me out of the door and slammed it quickly in my face. Lover, my bodyguard, he probably means at Laos. Get the lock slide in place the other side of the door. Anyway, it's probably for the best I head back and get some sleep. Once I got into my room, I locked the door and jumped straight under the covers. Closed my eyes finally. What a long day. I feel like so much has happened. Although, that's been every day lately. Destiny. Listen to. Speaker. More. The light shall guide you. A cold wind blew from the outskirts of Oxibor, where two men walked side by side. Not quickly, but at a speed to enjoy the night's atmosphere. They continued like this for a while, quietly and comfortably, but one of them broke the silence. It hasn't changed a bit, has it? It feels the same. Oppressive and cold. I'm still not sure about this. The people aren't any less creepy, either. If anything, they're even more tense than before. Ilron, you're changing the subject. What, me? <laughs> I would never! <sighs> all right, all right, I promise. I'll do everything I can to make sure they aren't harmed. The green-haired man watched the other out of the corner of his eye. Smooth, fair skin. Two moles under his lip. Peach hair, fluffy enough that he almost wanted to touch. Blank eyes that still moved to watch him back, even though they couldn't see him. You feel the same about him, right? The moment we met, I felt something, but he's... I don't know exactly what he is. Do you think he could be the same as you? No, but he feels similar. I feel drawn to him. Sure would be a shame if he died before we could work it out. Ilron. Varys. We won't let that happen. Us is burgered. Varys. Anyway, I was surprised by how much you teased them. You're usually much friendlier. But it worked, didn't it? <laughs> we learned a lot. And from the reactions to your questions, they couldn't be from anywhere else. Finally, an actual lead. After all these years of searching. And then, you can finally go back. Yeah. Varys extended his hand silently, reaching out to something unknown. This whole town feels like death. Like sadness and terror. But I can't see a single soul. These murders have gone on for longer than you've been alive. But if they've only ramped up in the last few years, Hundreds, if not thousands, must have died. So, where are their souls? They can't just have disappeared. I don't like where this is going. Me either. Ilron, I know I told you that we have to protect them, but... Promise me that if it becomes too dangerous, we'll leave. But <coughs> your life isn't worth throwing away for me. <sighs> Fine. You don't do anything reckless either. Varus turned his eyes back to Ilron and smiled. You're being very obedient today. <laughs> That's not something people usually call me. I guess I'm lucky then. I get to see all these different sides of you. <sighs> if you're cold, tell me, and we can stay somewhere warmer, okay? No need. You'll keep me warm, right? Of course. The night would be chilly and dark, with only the waxing moonlight to illuminate the path, but it was still more welcoming than the town. What's that? Someone banging on my door. Maybe if I just ignore it. Hurry up and get your ass out of bed. We haven't gone all day. Leos, why does he make such a racket? Hey, don't say it like that. Be a little nicer. Here we are, waiting for him once again. I've been knocking for like five minutes. Well, maybe he's busy. 
You've got to let a man take care of his business, you know? What could he possibly be busy with at this time in the morning? Maybe he woke up with a... Don't say that! You don't have any right to talk about him that way. Well, you two just shut up. <laughs> Look, if I have to stand here any longer, I'm gonna strangle someone. Hey, hey, don't threaten me with a good time. A little light strangulation, some candles. Uh... Is our Leo still sleepy? Not very good at mornings, are we? <laughs> Shut up. At least I'm awake. Unlike some. Wait, have I always slept? I looked toward the window. It's still dark out. The light from the moon rested softly over the room. Words ch chatter in the distance. Not long until sunrise, then. I didn't quite understand why we had to be out so early. Did Knox think it... Did Knox think that... The more time we had to investigate, the better. It made sense. Yet they were already up, so I'd better hurry. I jumped out of bed, quickly got dressed, and pulled the lock back from the door. Leo glared at me, sleepy expression on his face. Good morning. Is that all you have to say? I've been standing here for like five minutes. Uh, sorry I overslept? What do you want me to say? You didn't even oversleep. It's still early. Leo here is just upset that I woke him up. <laughs> Who would have thought someone like you would be so bad with mornings? Just hurry up. You've already kept me waiting long enough. Did you sleep okay, Rain? I did. I don't think I've ever slept on such a comfortable bed before. It would have been even more comfortable if we were in there together, don't you think? No. <laughs> you wish. Oh, sorry. I should have known to ask his bodyguard first. I'm not... You'd have to be his bodyguard, right? Otherwise, why would you be so protective? That'd be weird. The two of them continue bickering. He turned to Fawn. He was watching Sign with a strange expression on his face. Fawn? Yes? His face instantly lit up. Am I just imagining the expression? Ah, uh, like nothing. Did you sleep well? <clears throat> it's the first time I've ever slept on a proper bed. It's a shame about the circumstances. But I can't complain about being uncomfortable. Really? What about when you were a kid? Before you lived in the forest? Mm. If you like those beds, you'd love my place. Huge plush pillows. Ah, oh, I miss it already. We don't have time for this idle chit chat. Look, it's about time we left. If you're done now, we should be leaving. We quickly met a mate. <coughs> We quickly made our way down the staircase and into the hall below. Light from the moon now shone over our surroundings, illuminating the previously shadow-ridden room. Things that were hidden before, now were easily seen. Doors led off in all directions, but they were tightly shut. I wonder what lies beyond them. I wonder what's through those doors. I'm a little curious. Well, we died last time, so maybe let's not. I wasn't the only one thinking it. It makes me feel a little nosy, but I can't help but wonder myself. Probably best not to snoop around too much, though. We have a job to do. So, where are we headed first? If it were up to me, straight home. But since that's not an option... I'm sorry. I want that, too. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. Why don't we... go check out the town square that everyone's been talking about? It seems like a good place to start anyway. Not a bad idea. Brains and beauty all in one. You're a complete package. <sighs> Thank y you. I wonder where Knox went. I glanced around the empty room. There wasn't even a hint of life. No plants, no flowers, no pictures hanging on the walls. Anyway, let's get out of here. You got a lot to do today. We tried the door this time we found it unlocked. Ah. <sighs> air! Oh, how I've missed you! You were inside for one night. Stop overreacting. <sighs> Who'd want to stay in one place all night? Things to do, people to see? Or is it things to see, people to do? I never remember. They're both wrong. Anyway, it feels stuffy to be locked up all night like that. No one even tied me up. What a waste. Well, in one of the endings, you died, so I feel like, uh, you should be thankful. Why? That seems like a waste of time. 
so, which way is it? Oh, oh, I know the way. Ooh, ooh, uh, okay. Of course you do. Oh, Fawn. What's wrong? Uh, forget it. Said so the sun was struggling to peek out from between the dense gray clouds. But even that looked inviting right now. I was struck with the same sensation I felt in Sidewitch. Even though everything was so different here, some things you can't. Oh, some things can't help but stay the same. The way the sun rises and falls, the warmth that leaves on my face, the feeling of the wind blowing through my hair, it was all the same, no matter how far I was from home. The thing about it made me feel more comfortable. Maybe I'm not so lost after all. Plus, I'm not alone. There's no way I could do any of this without others. Laos and San were busy arguing about something or another. I was actually starting to think they were more similar than they realized. <laughs> you two are pretty close after all, right? What? Are you kidding me? I couldn't think of anyone worse to be close to. Aw, Leos. You're breaking my heart over here. Let me down easy, okay? What heart? <laughs> Ouch! You wound me! <laughs> With Laos and Fawn, I still seemed a little wary of Sign. Just yesterday, they were telling me not to trust him after all. But Sign has this way of forcing you to open up to him. He's easy to talk to, full of natural charisma and charm. We might have only just met, but I liked him. He's fun. You know, it's a little cheesy, and I know we haven't all known each other for very long, but I'm glad you guys are here with me. <sighs> Sorry, Leos. If I were you, I'd be pretty glad to have me around, too. <laughs> Why do you have a soft smile? And Sign wrapped his arms around my waist. Getting sentimental? What? No! I'm just happy. <laughs> I knew you were a dumbass, but this is taking it to new levels. There's a literal murderer on the loose, and you're being all sappy. A murderer? You mean someone other than you? Duh. Vaughn grabbed my arm and pulled me away from Sign, as casually as possible. If you three are done messing around, let's go. Vaughn, Leos, and I followed behind Sign through the streets. Turned out that Nox's house was actually pretty far from the center of town. It was set aside all by itself in a large piece of land. It was brisk and cool. And for some reason, I felt confident. Today was gonna be a good day. Hey guys, don't you think there's a lot of people around? Compared to yesterday, it was basically packed. People were walking around, going about their business. They didn't pay any attention to us, instead chatting with each other excitedly. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Fauna shrunk back a little. Withdrawn, but still doing better than he did in Sagwitch. He was getting more confident, less scared. But maybe I should still but maybe I should still check up on him. Sorry, buddy. I'm going oops all Laos. It's probably best to just leave him for now. I don't want to talk about it. So what's all the commotion about? Sign, do you have any clue what's going on? Nope. Usually I only come here for one thing, and it isn't wandering around the city. Oh, look. She's were aligned with stalls of every color of the rainbow. Some filled with fruits and vegetables and other baked goods, while others had knickknacks and collectibles. Weren't they all frightened yesterday? What would suddenly make them hold a market in the streets? I... I don't know. Something good must have happened. There was no other explanation for it. Earlier, I did say that I felt today would be a good day. Well, why don't we look around a little? I'm sure someone will know what's happening. Ooh, detective sign on the case! This isn't the time to be messing around. Grow up. I'm completely serious, you know. Watch this. Oh, I'm watching. Sign stormed forward, pretending to hold a magnifying glass and examining things. He turned back around and winked at Leo, showing off. <sighs> All right, you. Me? Mayor. Hey, wait! They always grabbed my arm and dragged me away from Sign and Fawn into a nearby side alley. Now listen here, I don't know what you're playing at, but whatever you have going on with that runt has to stop. Hey, yo! What? That runt? You know who I'm talking about. 
I'll get close to him and stop letting him follow you around. Wait, you mean sign? I wouldn't say we're close. We only met yesterday. And he's all over you like a moth drawn to flame. I don't like it and I don't trust him. I just don't understand how you can be so gullible. He's obviously after something and you're just, just giving it to him. But you barely know him. So how would you know? Don't you think you're judging him a little harshly? It's obvious. Normal people don't act like that. Oh, so normal people introduce themselves by starting forest fires. <laughs> <laughs> and since when did you care about what happened to me? Why are you suddenly being so protective? What? I'm not. How am I being protective? You are. You've been acting really weird lately. I just... This is your fault. What are you even talking about? I don't want to be close to you. I don't want to feel this way. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> but you forced yourself in this close. Even when I tried to push you away, and now I have no choice but to keep you safe. You never should have helped me in the first place. I can't let you. Not like them. What? It's not my fault. Would you rather we have just left you there to die? Yes. It's exactly what you should have done. We might think you saved my life, but all you did was make it more difficult. I can't... I can't protect you. Not when you keep making such stupid fucking decisions. It's like you're asking for someone to kidnap you and sell you as a slave or something. You know... You don't have to protect me. I can protect myself. I'm not a little kid. And it's not like you owe me anything. I did what any decent person would do. But most people aren't as decent as you. And I... I owe you more than you realize. Trust me. You would do it for me. What happened to make him like this? His expression was pained and distracted. As if losing me would be the worst thing in the world. It makes him look so grumpy. The sad face doesn't suit him at all. Don't make that sad face. Cheer up. Wait, 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 wait. what are you doing? What do you mean? I'm hugging you. Don't you know what a hug is? That's pretty sad. Yeah, but why? You look like you needed one. Get off me. Not yet. I'm so tall, I wasn't even sure if this was really comforting him. Sophie cheered him up even a little. And honestly, it didn't feel that bad. Sorry, I still don't really understand. But you're just trying to look out for me. Right? I... <sighs> I know we started off badly, but... I want to be friends with you. Don't you want to be friends? I... I don't, but at this point, do I have any choice? Mm hmm It's dangerous to be my friend. Are you sure? Yeah. I'd say it's kind of dangerous to be my friend now, too. So we're even. When I finally looked up at his face, he avoided my gaze. His cheeks were pink and his expression looked almost pained. Okay, okay, I, I, I get it. Let go of me already. You made your point. Yes, sir. I quickly let him go. If that went on any longer, I'd be risking my life. No word of this to the others, hmm? Okay. And, hey, I'll try to be more careful, alright? But be nicer to sign. No chance. When we found our way back to sign... Oh, when we found our way back, Sign was buzzing around Fawn, who looked a little scared. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here. Now that we know that it's working. So anyway, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully, I will see you later.